All right, guys, welcome to the live. We are um, we're live on YouTube and Facebook. I'm certainly hoping we are. If you're on, on, on both platforms, please let me know which one you're on so I know. Just the first couple of people would be awesome. A um, lot of stuff to talk about today. Um, first of all, I just want to get one thing out of the way. And, and you guys are always asking me for deals on my gear. And today I have a special announcement that my gear, such as the hoodie that I'm wearing and um, the hat, you can get 25% off just by using the code YTSHOPPING25. That is a huge deal. It's actually less than I pay for my own gear. So um, it's a special that YouTube Shopping is putting up and uh, helping uh, creators with. So I want to talk about a topic that is a very, very delicate topic. I know this is going to upset a lot of people. And I want to address it anyway. So um, let the hating begin, because what we want to talk about today is dog fights, dog attacks, and um, and all that. It's a, a tough topic because oftentimes this topic revolves around breeds like pit bulls, mastiffs, corsos, and such. These breeds are often maligned. I'm not saying they're all bad, but oftentimes they are responsible for most of the attacks that we see. The issue of dog aggression is something that I was working in for many, many years back when it was unpopular, then it became very, very popular. I didn't enjoy doing it because of my ego. I enjoyed doing it because I understood the behavior. I understood how to work with it, how to deal with it. And um, I, I had great success. I had, had, had a lot of success with it because I was able to transform dogs. I worked with shelter dogs. I worked in animal shelters with very, very, very difficult dogs and dogs that otherwise were not able to be helped. Dog aggression, dog fighting, dog attacks, all these things are very uh, specific behaviors that we need to look at in a focused view on one side, but also in a very general view on another side. People always say, you know, this dog is reactive. Well, uh, you know, people said, I hope you are going to tell, talk about the difference between reactive and aggression. Well, if a dog reacts aggressively, then that is aggression. Now, what we want to differentiate between is fear-based aggression and dominance-based aggression. Now, people put uh, aggression into so many different categories, and the real construct of aggression is going to either be based on fear or dominance. There's very, very middle ground in it. For example, a dog that has um, been attacked and is then afraid to be attacked again will generally act out of fear-based aggression. A dog that is resource guarding, resource guarding is not a type of aggression. It falls into the category generally of dominance-based aggression. The dog says, okay, this is my toy. I own it. You're not getting it. If you come to get it, then you're going to get bit. Um, we want to look at a couple of different things. When, and, and the aggression I'm going to talk about today or the fighting I'm going to talk about or the attacks I'm going to talk about today are going to be based on dog attacks on other dogs. I don't really want to get into dog attacks on humans. I may touch on it later. I will take questions later, but I want to really focus on the crux of the issue. And the crux of this issue is um, that oftentimes dogs get really hurt in these fights, in these attacks. Oftentimes, that is small dogs. Now, I can tell you a story. I had a Sharpay, very, very sweet dog. Sharpays notoriously are aggressive. This dog was not aggressive. I had had him, worked with him early on. Most loving, sweet dog, you know, I, I knew. He was attacked by a Doberman. And this attack happened right in front of my face, right in front of the place where I was living. The dog belonged to my neighbor at the time. And I was in a, qua a, a quagmire, in a quandary, like, what do I do? And I'm a relatively strong guy. I mean, I think I can defend myself. I think I'm, you know, stronger than the average person. So, um, I was able to get the dog off. I tried several things. I'm going to show you a video in a, in a, in a second here. Um, yes, it was, it, the dog's name was Silly. I don't know how you uh, remember that or know that, but that, that was my dog's name. Um, the dog was attacked, and the attack lasted maybe a minute. 
and um, it, it was handled re- very quickly by me. The owner was incapable of handling this dog. It was a very, very big dog. It was a 105, 110 pound Doberman, not standard for the breed, obviously, but a very, very big dog. Um, I will say to you that it was, I, I, the, the, the Doberman did not get hurt. My dog got, I think, 20, 30 stitches. Recovered fine. Never had an issue after that. But um, when you're talking about a small dog, the, the Sharpe I had was about 50 pounds. But when you're talking about a small dog, like I'm going to show you in another video, those dogs often get hurt. Janet had a dog named Bosman, Boswell, Boz, who was attacked by a big dog here in the neighborhood. And this dog um, did some serious damage to Boz. Boz almost lost his life. This dog was never prosecuted. The owners were never prosecuted. Nothing ever happened. And this is it, very upsetting. It's BS. If a dog attacks another dog, person's responsible. If a dog kills another dog, in my opinion, the dog should be killed. Um, I'll touch on all that. I, I have reasons for my logic. I have reasons for what I say. I have reasons for my passion. And I have experience to back all that stuff up. So um, when small dogs get attacked by large dogs, uh, we're, we'll cover some mistakes people make, like trying to pull the dog out of the dog's mouth, oftentimes that causes more and more damage. But let's start out with, I'm going to show a video. Now, forewarned, this is a gruesome video. If you want to um, tune out for a few minutes, then please um, tune out. Because I'm going, to, I'm going to start a video here in one second. And this video is going to be very, very disturbing. I'll give a full warning every single time I'm about to show a video that will be disturbing. But I want to show this. I want to help people understand the anatomy and analogy of what happens when a dog gets attacked. Now, this is a pit bull attacking a pit bull type dog. For people who can say it's not a pit bull. It is a, a, a pit bull type dog attacking a golden retriever. And there's a lot of pandemonium, a lot of stress. It's very, it's even upsetting to me when I see it. And I'll tell you why it's upsetting to me. It's because I'm not there to do anything. When I'm there, I know how to handle a situation. I've broken up plenty of dog fights. I've, I've broken up plenty of dog attacks. I'm, I'm not afraid to do it. And I'm going to cover on what you should do. I mean, it's going to be a very, very good video. It's going to be a huge video for everybody who is really interested in dogs and dog fights and helping dogs. So let me show you this video first. And I'm going to show you just a bit of it. And I may scrub through it a little bit, but watch what's about to happen. And please, if you're queasy, if you don't like gory type things, you might want to look away from the screen for the next couple of minutes. I'll tell you when to come back. Okay, so um, here's the video. So um, what happens in a, a dog attack oftentimes, and you want to talk about um, the uh, analogy of this, how this happens. These dogs come in contact with each other. Generally, it happens with a nose-to-nose sniff. Obviously, this happened in probably a nose-to-nose sniff. I don't know. This is not my video. I didn't shoot it. I know nothing about it. Um, but here's what's, um, what's going on. So the dog, the pit bull here, attacks the golden retriever. Now, it, I'm going to I'm going to back up for a second. I'm going to get a lot of gripe from people who are going to say what well, all dogs bite. And it's a saying that I've said my entire life. All dogs 
bite. But I would much rather get bit by a dachshund, a, and I've been bit by dachshunds, and I'd rather would get bit by poodles or anything, but I would not rather get bit by a mastiff, a corso, a presa canario, a Tibetan mastiff, an akita, a chow, uh, a pit bull, a, a, a cane corso. I, I don't want to get bit by them because they are dogs that are very, very powerful dogs, right? And this dog is not letting go. Now, people are screaming, get the testicles, get the testicles. Then they're screaming, you know, pick them up. And I want to show you all the mistakes that are made in a dog fight because what happens in a dog fight, and when I used to teach my class at the shelters, I would always say the first thing you should do if there is a dog fight is take a breath, right? The, as, as deadly and scary as it is, that sec, two, three seconds it takes you to go, <sighs> and fill your body with oxygen because when the body is in fight or flight mode and you go in, you're, you're lacking oxygen. Your brain is lacking oxygen and your muscles are lacking oxygen. So from a crystal clear standpoint, I see a dog fight and this has happened when I was working at the shelter. I see an attack. I take a breath. I take a deep, deep the deepest breath I can get, which is not a normal deep breath because my adrenaline is going. I take a deep breath. That's important. Okay, now, what I'm, I'm going to go back to the video here in a second. And I want to really talk about, this could be any two dogs, but the statistics show that more dogs are attacked by a pit bull type dog than any other dog. Now, I'm going to say pit bull type because people say, you know, people are going to say, oh, you know, I'm going to have people say, I, I have a pit bull would never attack anybody. It lives with a chihuahua, it lives with a blind dog, it lives with my kids. Um, I'm going to have people say, oh, I've had press of canaries. They've never had aggression. My kind of course never. And that's all fine. But your type of dog, those general breeds are the number one dogs that are attacking people, right? That's and dogs as well. Mainly, mainly dogs. Now, a really good um, pit bull is not going to attack anybody. But a really good any dog isn't going to attack anybody. I want to talk about where this comes from too, but I'm going to get to that in a minute. Now, I accept this um, blame when people start saying Malinois um, can, be, can be biters, Malinois can attack people, Malinois can do this and can do that. I accept it. There is horribly bred Malinois. There's terribly bred Mal Malinois. There's people backyard breeding them. There's people breeding dogs with no health testing, no temperament testing. It's something I'm going to go into. I'm going to do a whole breakdown of how crappy the Malinois breed has gotten in the last few years. I'm going to own that. I'm going to get on that. But what I want you to watch, again, I'm going to go back to the video, okay? Here we go. Stand by. I'm going to go here. Resume last video. Okay. <laughs>
and I'm aiming to put that stick down the dog's throat and jam it in there and cause some severe, severe damage, right? Now, I don't want to cause that kind of damage to break up a fight, right? I'm, I don't want to cause that kind of damage. I want to end the conflict. I don't I, let the law take it where it will. I mean, I've seen policemen come up and shoot a dog. There's another video of um, a policeman coming in and tasering a dog, another pit bull type dog. And um, this dog then, um, I'm sorry, yeah, it, it, the image is sickening. You're right, Tracy, I'm sorry. Um, but the, um, the, 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 the dog, once they're stunned, and this is something I want to talk about, things like pepper spray, uh, bear spray, anything like that. If this dog is locked on, and I'm not saying like the locking jaw thing. I don't believe in the locking jaw thing. I believe that massive corsos, these type dogs, have a much stronger grip, a much stronger bite. And when that grip is on the other dog, like it is here in this video, stand by, video coming again. When... Um, into some kind of trauma, like he's sprayed or anything like that, it does not stop it, right? L let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's the stick attempt. Uh, let me show you from here. Um, I kind of cut these down into little clips so you can kind of see. Both. the um oh okay thank you for that my audio goes out thank you for that um when, when the when the when the stick comes in um it should open off it doesn't though right and because the dog is moving the, the the attacking dog is now moving and when the dog is moving he cannot um he, he, you you can't get the stick in there that's the problem so there's that there is the, the other thing are people are doing, they're hitting the dog. I'm going to show you this quick clip here. Stand by, ugly video coming. Um, and they're going to show you, I'm going to show you the other one first, the lifting the dog, right? Here they're lifting the dog. Don't you don't pull him. He won't let go if you pull him. I don't know how to be let go. Okay, the dog is lifted in the air and um, nothing is happening because the dog is clenched on. The dog is in the fight. The dog is in it to win it. It is, I, I know, it's horribly horrifying. I'm please, I'm showing you this video to make point by point assessments of what, this is the worst thing that could happen in a fight. Well, that's not the worst. The worst would be he'd have a hold of the dog's neck, which is what the target generally should be for a dog fight, that, a dog that's in it to kill it, right? And in it to win it. This dog here is in it. He got, he got the leg. Now, generally, a, the dog is, is going to thrash. The dog is going to grab and thrash and thrash. He's not going to try to regrip. He's definitely um, not going to, um, more than likely, going to try to reposition his bite. Okay, so you, you, you have to understand what will and what won't work. You have a lot of people screaming. The screaming accelerates the adrenaline keeps the dog in the fight, keeps the dog that's being bitten more scared. Now, you notice the whole time, this, and this is a concept I want to really dwell on, the entire time that this um, dog is attached to the other dog, the pit bull is attached to the golden retriever, onto the leg, not one time it, it, can I see that, in, and I watched this video a hundred times before I put it on today, not one time did the golden retriever try to bite the pit bull, which would make common sense, right? If this dog is attached to the leg of the dog, why doesn't the other dog then grab the pit bull's neck? Because it's not a fighting dog. That's clear and simple, right? A good fighter, 
knows you've got me in an arm lock. I'm going to try to use my other hand to choke you out. You punch me in the face, I kick you in the stomach. That's what a fighter knows. This dog is a complete victim. No matter what anybody says, this golden retriever is the victim. The golden retriever is being, it, 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 the, the pit bull has a hold on his leg and is crushing the leg and twisting and tearing and crushing while the golden retriever is laying there screaming his brains out trying to get help from people. And nobody, nobody gets it. So what's the solution? What should you do? And I want to get into this. I want to touch on it. I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to take questions from you guys. I'm going to, have to put my glasses on. I don't have Janet here today to help. I'm going to explain things to you. Okay, so the stick in the mouth didn't work. Now, here's the thing. If this was just two average dogs, two lab mixes or shelter mixes or some average dog, even a really strong German Shepherd that wasn't protection trained, um, a, d a dog that's just kind of biting, it's just, it just grabbed the dog, it's frustrated or whatever, a smack in the head, a kick in the stomach is going to make them let go, right? The, the average dog. Now, a really well-trained protection dog, Rottweiler, German Shepherd, Malinois, stuff like that, it won't because it's trained to hold on. Remember what I'm saying here. These dogs are trained to hold on. The pit bull or the mastiff or these dogs are bred to hold on. That's a difference. It's, this is a genetic thing. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you what happened to the, uh, to the golden retriever. The golden retriever gets away. It, it's, it's not a fatal attack, which is why I don't feel bad showing it. Um, I want to show you another video. Well, first, let me show you the end of this video first and, and how it ends so that we can wrap this video up. Okay, so I'm going to show you the end of this video, which is... Um, You, you, somebody here is, is putting comments in, a water hose would have helped. And I'm going to tell you why it wouldn't help. There's plenty of videos of pit bull type dogs attacking other dogs and people take the water hose and they start spraying the dog. It doesn't work. It'll work with a soft dog. It'll work with a dog, a golden retriever fighting another golden retriever, two border collies fighting, an Australian shepherd, fight, whatever. Those kind of dogs fighting, it will work. It will not, it will not work um, on a dog like this, right? The, I'll tell you how it would work. If you took that hose and shoved it down the, the, the pit bull's throat and drowned him, right? That's sadly the only way it would work. I don't want to be cruel here, but I'm trying to tell you how this will resolve itself, okay? The person came up behind the dog, grabbed him by the collar, and just started shaking him. Not the best way to do it. In other words, if this had been a, 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 a um, <laughs> try and do your eyeliner, it, it's not, it's not going to help you here. Um, the dog is trying, the, the dog is, if the dog would have been dead, by the way, if it was a small dog. Um, the person grabs the collar from the rear and does it. Now I'm going to show you a video. This, in this video, it shows a somewhat proper technique to what to do. Okay, gory video coming, warning, watch. Watch this video because this is your solution. And I'm going to demonstrate it as well here in a second, okay? Okay, this is the video.
Okay. So, um, yes. If they're big, powerful dogs, Joe, you're right. You choke them. So what you should always have with you, now you can use a belt or whatever, and the person who did this in the video took the leash, doubled it over the dog's neck, and made a knot, and then started choking down like this on the dog's neck, which is great, but this takes a lot of strength. Now, choking any big dog is going to take a lot of strength, but there's another methodology. If you have the strength, this is a big dog. If you're a big guy like me, a big, you know, or bigger, hopefully, um, you can get behind the dog, and if you're not afraid of getting bit, you can slip your arm in behind the dog's neck and do a rear naked choke. That's, you know, I guess that's just a term for a wrestling term, but you just get in behind the dog's neck and you just crank down on the neck. But the key thing here is you want to do this until the dog passes out because if you don't, if you let go too early on a choke on a dog just when he spits out the other dog and you're the next thing there, he's going to turn around and bite you. So this advice I'm giving you today, if you don't do it correctly, you could get hurt. So I encourage you to not try it unless you're going to take that risk on your own. It's not my responsibility. I'm telling you what I would do, what I've done, and what I've taught. The easiest answer is a slip lead or even any leash. Remember, every leash has a handle on it, right? So the idea is to slip this around the dog's neck and then put this side through the handle. That's the easiest way to do this. Once it's through the handle, you're going to lift up here and the dog's neck is here, right? Now, all you need to do is use the dog's own body weight against himself and lift this up, right? As you're lifting this up, it will take away the air of the dog. Air is the number one thing. Oxygen is the number one thing any animal needs to survive. When you take that away, it, first of all, immediately will start to relax the dog. It will immediately take the dog off of the power it has, and it will start to lessen the pressure of the muscle. The muscle will not be able to do what they're doing when there's no air, when there's no blood flow to the brain. These things, blood flow to the brain, air to the body, will shut this down. You have to stay away from people who are screaming. You have to be careful people are going to come in and be kicking the dog, punching the dog, hitting the dog with sticks. I've seen, I've seen every methodology, the finger in the, in the rectum, the grabbing the testicles, grabbing the tail, grabbing the back legs, spraying the water, spraying with pepper spray, uh, kicking, hitting, punching, gouging the dog's eyes. None of that will work on a real fight, right? The only, yes, take away the dog's primary resource, air and blood. That's, gonna, that's going to do it. Now, um, there's, I, I want to talk a little bit about aggression, okay? Now that I've given you the, the synopsis of it, if that's all you came for, you learned a lot and you, you can tune out. I hope you'll stay tuned. Um, also, I hope you'll check out my website, robertcabral.com, for tons of dog training. And if you want to be a dog trainer, I talk about this, uh, breaking up dog fights, as well as other things on my shelter dog course, which is a course for dog trainers. There's two reasons that dogs are aggressive. There is a genetic reason. They're just bred very, very poorly or it is a learned behavior. Now, a learned behavior comes from a dog that is um, not properly uh, raised, not properly structured, um, not given good experiences. The fight instinct is a natural instinct, right? Fight or flight is what keeps all animals alive. Any animal will have the inclination to fight. Any animal. Maybe a sloth doesn't. I don't know. You need to understand that good genetics win out all the time, right? Good genetics, when the sperm hits the egg in that process, 90% of the decisions are made for the dog. You can have a dog that is genetically predisposed to aggression. It happens in every breed. There's genetic testing for it on some dogs. I was talking to my friend Frank Phillips about it with Malinois. Some Malinois have a genetic predisposition to rage, to, to, and they can be very, very dangerous. And those dogs should be put down because it's just a ticking time bomb. The predisposition to aggression is very, very prevalent in dogs that were used to fight. The Japanese Tosa Inu, the, the Presa Canario, the Pitbull Terrier, the, uh, the course, any dog that was bred to fight will um, 
be able will have that predisposition. Now, um, yeah, it, you're right. It is astounding that people that want to always put their finger up the rectum of the dog. You're right, and I need to wear my glasses so I can actually read all this stuff. But um, that's the first part we need to look at. I also want to talk about um, to 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 be a balanced dog. And I've got some notes here. Um, there's a few things the dog needs. First of all, good genetics are the number one thing. So if you get a dog from a Craigslist, a backyard breeder, um, you don't know anything about the dog, you're rolling the dice. Now, people say, what about rescue dogs? You know, it, it's still a roll of the dice. And even if you get the dog from a good breeder, there's still a roll of the dice, but the dice are loaded, right? The chances are you're going to get a better dog from a good breeder because they've done genetic testing. They've done health testing. They know the lines of the dog. They know the temperament of the dogs. They know uh, what these dogs have done in the past. A good breeder is, breeder is worth their weight in gold because they've gone through this process. They've watched. They've culled out dogs that shouldn't be being bred. They've, they're careful on the lines they're breeding, and they're also careful where they place the dogs. That is critical. People don't want to talk about it, but you need to hear it from me. So good genetics, great exposure, early exposure, positive exposure, um, good experiences, good socialization, good experience when the dog is among other dogs, among people, among other stimulus. This is imperative for a dog to have good exposure, to be a positive dog, a dog that doesn't have issues like aggression. Um, and then, of course, the number one thing is the number one thing that you're going to be able to do, of course, after that is structure. Now, if a dog is predisposed to aggression, can they get along in society? Yes, it can be managed in a large percentage of dogs. I've, I've worked with it. I've helped people with it. I've taught it. I've seen other trainers do it. It's not impossible. You can do it. Dogs are dogs. They have, they're, they're still an animal um, that we don't really communicate with as effectively as we communicate with each other. Although most of the time I would say I can communicate better with my dog than I communicate with most people. Um, um, I, I'm not going to make the, the complete... Um, Oh, okay, same with me working with pit bulls. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, well, if you want to see me working with pit bulls, I can tell you right now that uh, look at my shelter dog training course. It's all pit bulls because the shelters are flooded with, at that time, were flooded with pit bulls. And now there's more and more and more um, people um, dumping, sh d dumping Malinois. So the shelters are going to be filled with Malinois. And that's going to be a whole other thing. Because pit bulls, will they attack a person? Yes. You know, is it the number one target for a pit bull? No. Pit bulls will target other dogs, just like terriers, um, Airedale terriers, any other terriers. They are generally more dog aggressive than people aggressive. Malinois will be dog aggressive, but they will be most of the time because of the way they're being bred, because people are breeding them for protection. These dogs are going to be um, more people aggressive. Malinois will be. So that's a whole new problem coming up, guys. That's, and that, that's a problem that we had with German Shepherds back a few years back when the German Shepherds were being screwed, and I'm going to be doing a video how the Malinois got, you know, effed um, because of bad breeding, bad genetics, no temperament testing, all these things. It's really, really, really bad. Um, I, I will take questions today. I, I want to be clear that th this is about trying to, I want to address questions that have to do with um, aggression and attacks and generally related to other dogs. I will take questions that for those of you who have already done a super chat, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate it. It's not necessary at all. I, I take all questions, whether you're uh, from a super chat or not, all questions I can get to, I should say. What I want to do, um, what I'd love you to do instead is subscribe to this YouTube channel. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, so that, and hit the notification bell so you'll know when I'm, being, when I'm gonna go live, when I'm putting up new videos um, and, and everything. Also check out my website, robertcabral.com, for uh, my membership section, which has a ton, uh, less than 20 bucks a month, you can get access to um, 60 plus hours of video instruction, all for that one price. Uh, it's 20 bucks a month. It's, a, it's the best deal on, uh, on the internet. Um, also, my online dog training, robertcabral.com, for um, shelterdogtraining.com, which gives you access to my course, which is a very, very detailed, long course on um, how to become a dog trainer and how to how to understand dog behavior. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my glasses on um, and very handsome, I'm sure you agree. 
And I want to talk about, I want to take some questions here. I I'm going to go back to see if there are any questions. Um, thank you for all the thumbs up. I greatly appreciate that. If you're on my Facebook page, if you're watching this from Facebook, please, um, I would love to have you um, like and follow my page as well. Uh, I'm trying to build that up as well. I'm on Instagram and everything. I would love to have you follow so that you can see all the stuff I put. Every week I post several videos on dog training, dog advice, dog uh, structure, dog behavior, and such. Um, very enjoyable stuff, always on YouTube and on Facebook. And I thank you guys both for, um, actually, I thank you all for tuning in on both of my platforms. And I'm able to do this now with um, the software I'm using so I can go to both uh, platforms yeah, very, very, very quickly. And that's awesome. So thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, okay, so let's go here. Let me see if I've got any questions. If you have a question, by the way, okay, here's, I'd like it to be like this with a question mark in the front. A uh, dog wants other toys over his own, so how best to do? Okay, I'm trying to um, stay on dog aggression. This is a, a topic on that, but um, if a dog wants other toys over his own, you haven't, you've, you, you've made your toys or his toys unimportant. He probably has access to his toys all the time. When I train dogs with toys, only the toy I'm going to uh, train with it comes out when I'm ready to train. Otherwise, my dogs are laying. My dog Goofy is laying on the couch. Maya is laying on the floor. Jimmy's laying on the chaise. Uh, there are no toys in my house. If the dog has to access to toys all the time, not good. Um, okay, Deborah, great question. How do you deal with it when you have dogs packing up, um, attacking another dog, and you're alone? There's nothing you can do, right? There's nothing you can do. You got yourself in a really bad situation, um, and you, there's not, you, you will not be able to do it. You can grab one dog and choke them out at a time, but it's, 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 it's one of those situations where you're not, um, not going to solve that problem. It's really, really sad. Um, okay, thank you for this here, Lynn. This will be in the thing where it talks about that gene thing. I hope that's the right one. I hope you're not just scamming me. Um, yeah, it's, 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 shelters are filled with Malinois German Shepherds everywhere, but pit bull is the number one thing. Um, fence fighting... Um, is a, a territorial aggression, right? It's generally not going to continue if the fence is removed. You've seen videos of that online. Um, but the way you keep a dog from fence fighting is keep a dog away from the fence. That's really, really critical because the more the dog gets that frustration built up in that fence line, the more likely the dog should continue it. Now, once the dog is in this frustration phase, what you have to understand um, is that the dog will then often turn on another dog behind the thing. Okay, my explanation of aggression, I'd like to think that it has its part in life. Well, you know, the <laughs> it's a loaded question. Strength, you know, or masculinity, um, or defensiveness has its place in life. Aggression, there is aggression in life, but you need a strong person to quell that aggression. Like if you just have somebody being aggressive to somebody, aggression towards someone who's being aggressive or aggression towards someone or a creature who's hurting. Like if someone, if you're aggressive and you're upset because this dog is trying to kill this other dog and you use aggression and strength to save the dog's life, well, then you've done a good thing. But aggression for the sake of aggression is not a good thing. So um, I, I, it's, I think you're, it's a loaded question. Um, I trust no dog, especially with pets. You know when you have the trust by body language. Well, um, you shouldn't trust a dog, especially small dogs. Um, you know, that's that's a big problem. Um, Eli, there is there is less than a minute to intervene when things start accelerating. That's actually true. You're very very right. That's why I said you need to take that breath because you need to, um, you know, you need to you you need to be in control. Um, this is a great question. Cigar, should we avoid all random dogs on a walk? And the answer to that is 100% unequivocally yes. I avoid all dogs. Even a dog that might start out kind of friendly or whatever can go from this friendly wagging thing to a stiff posture and attack, right? Your dog does not need to meet any other dogs. That's crystal clear. I have that rule. Janet and I have that rule that my dogs do not meet random dogs. Doesn't happen. Never. Now, do I let my dog, you know, when I'm at the park with, um, let's say, Ziggy or something? Yeah, if I know that dog, that, that dog has been in, in, Goofy has been friends with Ziggy since Ziggy was nine weeks old. They can, they can uh, meet, they can hang out, they can do whatever. I have, oops, I have no problem. I can 
read the body language, know what's going to happen, and correct it quickly. But yes, I would certainly uh, avoid that. Okay, Ashley Bill says, dominant spade female border collie, six years old. She gets great, long great with our Aussie, but she growls if other dogs get too close. I'd love it if she would play with other dogs. No, no, you wouldn't love it if she played with other dogs. She's growling. She's telling you she doesn't want to play with other dogs, and you're not listening, right? Your dog does not feel like it should be playing with other dogs, and that's what you've got to realize. Your dog does not need to play with other dogs. These, the idea of the dog park and over-socializing dogs is a fallacy. If you're a strong guy, Kyle was here, and I'm going to have him back on another podcast. We talked about it. He loves dog parks. He's six foot two, he's 200 something pounds. He can break up just about any dog fight. So can I. But I don't want to be there with dogs that have aggression issues. And more than likely, there's going to be at least one or two in there who's going to be unstable. Guarantee it, right? If you have somebody like me running a play group, or you have somebody like, like Kyle, or some, somebody who's a really savvy dog person managing it, nothing's going to happen. But you don't. You have a bunch of people texting on their phones in a dog park. You have a bunch of people without knowing what to do with their dogs in a dog park. And you, you have issues. And, and you taking your dog to a dog park, you're, having, you're going to make a big, big problem. Okay, Sage's way, what's your explanation of aggression? Is, okay, I already um, answered that question. Okay, Lucy, I have a well-balanced and happy female, entire male who is ex-military working dog. Our main issue is small dogs starting on her, I think you mean staring at her during walk. We just avoid them. Is there a better way to approach? No. Because what you want to do is you want to teach this dog, and again, if it's an ex-military dog, it's a dominant dog. It's a confident dog. It's not going to have an issue, right? Dominant dogs generally don't have as much of an issue as an insecure dog, um, a, especially an, a, 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 an intact female or an intact male. It's, com it's a complete dog. It understands what it should be doing. As long as you keep moving when dogs stare, you keep moving. Good girl, let's go. Like my dogs, if I see a dog staring, I'm going to say, come on, let's go. Now, once in a while, I can get five of my dogs one at a time with me. I can get them to sit even if it's a dog lunging. It's not fair to your dog. Keeping your dog moving keeps the energy going, and it keeps the dogs from having an issue. Um, okay, Efren says, I have a one-and-a-half-year-old male, Mal, that doesn't like people at all. He only growls. That's not good. When approached by people and touched, but I just can't get him used to people. We live in the city. Tried and tried. Well, there's something obviously genetically um, at fault with your dog because the dog, sh there's no reason for dogs that are bred to not like people. How long have you had the dog? Does the dog, you know, do you know about the dog's history? Do you know about the dog's um, genetics? Do you know about the dog's, I, I would probably test the dog on the genetic test to see if the dog has the rage. I think it's a UC Davis test that, that they do. Um, I would look at that. I would look at it very, very carefully. I would try to understand why your dog doesn't like it. I would ask the breeder who bred the dog, was the dog socialized at an early age? And what, did the dog have bad experiences? This is why getting a dog from a good breeder who has bred the dog, who knows the lines, who knows the genealogy of the dog, who knows the temperament of the dog, the history of its parents, its grandparents, and who has exposed this dog to positive things early on in its life is worth its weight in gold. $500 dog off Craigslist is not going to have that. Um, how do I train a dog that tends towards dominant behavior to A, stop that behavior and not accelerate it or choose better social behavior? Um, well, I, I, first of all, condition dogs to accept good things, to, to seek out good things, to, to make good things very pleasurable to the dog and to make um, bad things avoidable, right? So I want to make sure the dog understands that one most important thing, I'm in complete control over the dog. I bring great things to the dog. I bring um, happiness to the dog. I bring food to the dog, toys, training, and everything like that. You must control the dog's entire life because you're feeding the dog, you're walking the dog, you're caring for the dog. These are all things that the dog sees as very important things in their life. Then they should also, because of that, respect you because of those things. And at some point, sometimes dogs need to be corrected. That I don't care if that's a leash, a pop, or a, a scruffing the neck, or really coming down on a dog. Um, I have no problem correcting a dog because a dog that is not corrected, that doesn't understand the right or wrong or the structure, the social structure, the hierarchical structure that I'm in charge and you're not, if the dog tends towards dominance, it's going to be a problem. And that's it. 
and all positive you know, purely positive people can can tell me this and uh, I, and I don't care because they do not have the answer. They have never handled these dogs I've handled. They have never solved the problems I've solved. So, um, okay, Dawn, nice to see you. That's always Dawn is a fantastic friend for many, many, many years. New Silly um, is a fantastic rescuer and uh, and 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 a good uh, friend. So recently we got a new Sharpay puppy and he's challenging for position in the house and trying to start fights. He's seven months was neutered this week. He has also come with vision impairment, looking for some advice. So. The first thing I would do, the visual impairment shouldn't be as much of an issue um, because the dog still has a sense of scent, because and so he'll know who's around him. I would start by crating the dog and letting the dog um, experience everything around being confined, being in a set area where nothing can get to him and he can't get to anything. That structure sets things up. And then slowly, I know you have multiple dogs, I would want to have your dog you know, take a walk, be out socially with other dogs. Maybe you can do some hand feeding, get the dog to understand structure. But if the dog tends towards dominance or posturing, just because the dog is visually impaired or even blind doesn't mean you shouldn't correct him. But with a visually impaired dog, I always make sure the dog knows it's coming from me. I go, hey, 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 and then I'll grab the dog and give the dog a correction. Um, and I also talk to the dog a lot when I'm giving the dog treats, when I'm petting the dog. Um, I use my voice a lot because hearing, um, the number one scent of the dog is scent that's the number one sense of the dog the number the two scent sense of the dog is hearing the third is sight the dog hardly uses its sight for anything that's that's above a certain distance um, or below a certain distance i should say so good structure but start out in a crate let the dog see everything is fair and that should really help you um okay i have a seven-month-old pit bull dogo mix female that's that's a tough mix. I'll be honest with you. You're, you're, you're swimming up upstream already. She is sweet and smart. My issue is I'm concerned with her attacking my cat. I've not exposed her to other dogs. How do I safely go about this again? Crate. The dog comes into your house. The dog was in a crate. The cat's walking around. That dog has to see the cat was first. The cat runs the show. Make sure the cat has plenty of places to get away. High shelves, high catteries, um, high, high um, cat trees and stuff like that. But the dog must be neutralized. And pit bull, dogo, dogo Argentina is not a, not a very easy dog to handle. A very dominant bred dog, um, and they have a, a, a tendency towards fighting. So, be very very careful and use a crate early early on in the beginning. Can we have your personal experience on the Presa Canario? I've trained a couple only Presa Canarios. Um, again, a very very dominant breed, a dog that that tends towards fighting, a dog that is that a dog that enjoys the fight. Um, Akitas, uh, Akita Inus, uh, Tosa Inus, um, Chows, um, Pit Bulls, Corsos, uh, Mastis, a lot of the Mastis, they enjoy the fight. They're sentry dogs. That's what they were bred to do. So um, that's easily too easy for you to understand that if a, if a, in other words, if I look at a border collie or watch the show uh, the muster dogs on uh, Netflix, th these dogs coming out of the of the mother, they're already hurting, right? They understand that that is what they're genetically bred to do. They understand that game so quickly. So uh, if a dog is bred to fight, the dog is bred to fight, you know. Um, Again, I just want to remind you guys real quick, if you're still here, which a lot of you are, 300-something people, um, if you go through my YouTube channel, you can buy all my gear today for 25% off. That's less than I pay. Um, YouTube is having a promo for some of its creators, myself included, that you, sh you can get 25% off using the code YTSHOPPING25. Just a quick plug. Um, I don't even know if I'm going to get any commission because uh, they're selling it so cheap. Okay, Hotbox question says, I have uh, two male XL bullies that have grown up together, not from the same litter, but close to age. Always got on, played well, but recently one has started resource growing toys from the other, and that is totally normal. First of all, the XL bully, I have a big problem with it. I think it's a really uh, misbred dog. It's a genetic mutation, which I hate seeing, but I'm not going to bust your chops about it. You got this dog. Um, I wish people wouldn't get these kind of dogs. Um, I don't like it. But um, yeah, two dogs brought up together that are at the same age will always do that. When you have an older dog and a younger dog, the older one already has structure, you're able to impose that structure. You're going to have a hard time um, putting these dogs um, apart, trying to correct these dogs. That's going to be um, a, very, a big challenge because these are very, very, very big dogs. Um, 
all I can say is you got your hands full and this is going to happen. If you get two dogs, litter mates or anything like that, it's going to happen. You're, you're, you set yourself up for it. Okay. Rig says my mountain was raised with uh, farm animals, ducks, pigs, goats, etc., and had no problem without a leash. When he reached a year old, he suddenly became aggressive to other animals. What did I do wrong? You did nothing wrong because when a dog is at a year, that's the adolescent phase. This is where it goes through its dominance phase, its fear phase, and all these things. This is where the dog is starting to learn what it can and what it can't get away with. Now, if you didn't, at that 9- to 12-month window, have that serious heart-to-heart, you know, come-to-Jesus meeting with your dog, then you, um, you, you, you missed a vital point. The dog, my Malinois, for example, when I brought him home, my Sharpay when I brought him home, I had a parrot. Everybody knew the parrot was the most important thing. They would they valued their lives more than they valued killing the parrot. That's all. That's a simple way to say it. They knew that the parrot was that important to me. When I bring when I brought Goofy and Maya to meet Janet's dog Bosman, a ten pound um, doc, mini dachshund, they knew they valued their lives more than they valued trying to hurt that dog. And in the end, you know, Boz's last days, everybody and Boz was very frail in the end. Um, everybody was so kind and so gentle with Bosman because I put structure on the dog. I'm the guy you want putting structure on the dog. And I want people to know that you want to put that structure on the dog because you will have a very, very happy life. And that's what you got, you need. So, um, can you, okay, so this is a great question, Melissa Temple. Can you stop a dog fight using an air horn? Yes, with some dogs, especially if it's just starting, if you pop an air horn, that startle will go, whoa, what, what, is, what am I doing? What, what's that? And it will distract them. Now, a dog that's in the fight, no, not going not gonna to happen. Um, would you consider pit bulls to have a unique variety of aggression? If so, are there specific things to do in your response to tailor the lesson for a best Lesson best for well, I mean, yes, pit bulls do have a unique um, a, a variety of aggression. They they certainly do because they're a high drive dog with aggression. Where a dog like a mastiff, a, a corso, has aggression, but it doesn't have that level of drive, that excitability, that prey drive. That comes in from the terrier side. So you have two different components. You have the the mollusker side, the bull side, the the same uh, genetic mutation, let's say, would be in a Cane Corso or something like that. And then you have a terrier mixed into that. That combination, or a boxer and a terrier, whatever, those combinations is what gives you that, that frenetic drive to bite, to fight, and to kill. So um, let's see. Here's another one. Neil, oops, I missed that. Oh, Neil. I'm going to have to cut it short here in a couple minutes, guys. If you're members, you get another hour of me. If you're not, um, you'll see me next time. When you choke a dog out to stop a fight, when should you stop choking? What are the signs to look for? Well, first of all, I'm going to be real clear that you can hurt a dog with a choke if you don't know what you're doing. But you certainly hope that you will be hurting the dog that was going to kill another dog. In other words, uh, it, it's kind of that whole idea. If I stop somebody from killing somebody and I kill them in the process, it's manslaughter. Whereas if the person just kills the other person, it's murder. Um, what I would suggest is, you know, when I choke, just like if I was choking a person, I would stop choking when they go limp, like right, when they stop breathing, stop moving per se. Um, but I, I would not, in my opinion, stop that pressure on the dog if I thought I was going to let go and that I was going to get bit. I'm not going to get bit, right? It's not going to happen. I am going to protect myself, one, my family two, and my dogs three. That's it. And I will do that with my life. I will do that with my life. Um, and I hope you make that decision too. Um, okay, I have maybe one more person. Um, I'm looking for question marks. Okay. Is it me um, or are small dogs more aggressive? Thankfully, my seven-year-old Mal and 19-month-old Mal, um, seven-year-old Mal, um, are tuned into me, know their commands, but every time we walk by little dogs. Well, yeah, little dogs tend to have more of an aggression side, a more of a snarky kind of side. Because people put that into their dogs. When they raise them poorly, they always pick them up. They always, you know, baby them. 
um, I see more, I've seen more aggression, which is not dangerous, obviously, um, in little dogs. And I'm saying not dangerous to somebody like me or the average person. It's still very dangerous to a child um, because a child will put their face in a dog's face and it will get torn up. Um, but the idea is that the um, aggression isn't dangerous. Somebody like me where I might get a bit on my hand, but I'm not going to lose my life if a, a big pit bull XL or a Corso or a Tibetan Mastiff knocks me down and gets me by the throat and kills me, right? Because dogs kill people. Um, um, and again, I know I've upset a lot of people, which is good, um, because if I upset you for the right reasons, I've done my job. Um, there are issues going on, right? There are a lot of issues going on with aggression, right? It was the German Shepherd. It was the Rottweiler. It was the pit bull and the Malinois coming. The Malinois coming right down the line. And like my friend Bart said, it's not 5 to 12, it's half past 12. Um, the, the, this ship has already sailed. People are back there breeding these Malinois. People are uh, not paying attention to lines. They're just, oh, this Malinois bred to this Malinois. We've got 12 puppies. Um, we hope we can find them a home. And if we can't, too bad. We'll dump them at the shelter. And when people can't handle the dogs, they dump them at the shelter. And these are dogs that are genetic mutations. Malinois are also a very... Uh, dangerous dog that can cause a lot, a lot of damage. And people are doing horrible things with the breed. It's my next, my next video is going to be coming up. I'm going to talk a lot about that. I'm going to upset a lot of people. Good. Um, if I upset you guys today, I, uh, I, I want to say thank you for tuning in, right? I want to, I want to give you food for thought. I want you to think about what I talked about. I want you to think about what I said um, about dog aggression. I want you to think about what I said, that if a dog is attacking another dog, and I'm going to close with this because those of you who tuned in later might not have heard this. You, please replay the video as much as you can. But remember something, having a leash with you, right? Just a simple, any leash will do this because here's the side that's on the dog. This is the side that's on the dog. This is the side I want you to focus on, which is the handle, right? When you have this handle and you can snake this around the dog's neck. I'll put my hand over my microphone here. This is your answer. Here. Okay, there's a question. What do I do? What do if unleashed dog approach our leashed dog? Um, well, first of all, I'm going to touch on that one second, but remember, this is your answer if you need it to save your dog's life, your life. Or if the dog is attached to a person, I didn't even touch on that, but if the dog is attached to a person's arm, a person's leg, don't try to pull the dog off. You will pull off so much skin, it will not, it will not help. You need to choke the dog off, and oftentimes we want to choke the dog into the bite. Um, thank you for not going to dog parks, Elizabeth. God bless you for that. Um, and if, un, you know, if unleashed dogs approach my dog, I immediately get in their face. I immediately go, hey, hey, hey get out of here. I'll bang a stick on the ground. Um, I will have pepper spray with me because the one thing that before the dog attacks your dog, if you can get pepper spray onto them and you know they're about to attack, and if they're off leash and they're acting aggressive, my assumption is they're going to attack. Pepper spray is not going to kill the dog. It's not going to, but I would use it. I would, I would use it to protect myself and my dog, and my family. If I see an, un if I see an off-leash dog, I got no problem with it. I can leash a dog. I, I have no problem personally with it. I'm not that worried about it. But if I have a little dog with me, I have an older dog with me, I have my wife with me, I have my mother with me, and I see it, I'm going to solve the problem. Because if you have your dog off-leash, I got no problem with it. But you got to be able to control your dog. You can't control your dog, I'll control it for you. That's it, guys. Um, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to head into my live, my member live. Thank you so much. Over 300 people consistently in this live the entire time. Thank you for being here. You can replay this video. It will live on YouTube and Facebook in eternity. You can watch it until they probably ban it for, for uh, doing something here, um, for, for upsetting some people. But again, if I upset you, I did my job. I want you to know how to keep yourself and your dog safe so that the government doesn't step in and start taking our dogs away. That's very important to us. God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in. Check out my site, robertcabral.com, and I'll see you there. Great member section for anybody who wants to learn more about dogs.